Tucker, 8.5 cubic inch jet unit behind them. And of course, uh, being double driven, uh, this boat, but uh, in it uh, right at the moment, we've got Tim Betts and Joe Kapua. And uh, these guys will be leaving uh, nothing on the track, mate. They're always out there for a good time, but uh, winning's where they want to be always, though. Just uh, for those of the uh, rev heads out on the course, this is a 412 cubic inch maximum capacity in the Group A, restricted cam, restricted carburetor as well. The Group B has a lot more restrictions in it. So uh, that's just the basics of what a Group A engine is, 412 cubic inch, restricted uh, with the carvies. But now Tim Betts and Joe Kapua, Keep an eye on this one because Betsy just does sneak up on it uh, throughout the course of the day. I don't know that we're going to see him go fast enough to be bothering the top people at the uh, at the top part of the pointy end of the field. But it is a race within a race for him and the B driver and also a race in the middle of the fleet as well. So there's uh, so many races going on here and these guys will line themselves up with their partner. He's gone the wrong way. Joe Kapua, well, I wonder if Betsy, the driver, is going to blame the navigator there. You would suggest that that'll be the go. I don't think so, mate. If you go back, and we might not pick it up on the replay, but when they came back through that uh, the cross wash, wash machine part of the track, uh, there may be a bit of a weed or something, we don't know, but, well, not by the, the show of that, but they, um, yeah, that's where they got into trouble. They come unstuck, bit of, uh, bit of frustration uh, setting in, or even a bit of, uh, I don't know where we're going sort of style, but no, I don't think Joe will get the blame for that. Betsy's uh, the sort of guy that'll carry that blame. They've gone the wrong way. They needed to go right out of there and not left. So if they come back here, turn left there, no, they're not no. going to do it. Come left right there. around. Oh, Betsy no. and Joe, they are in all sorts of bother. They are in a, they're in a mouse trap at the moment, in the maze, in, in the, the maze? mouse maze. Yeah. And I dare say the look of the body language of this boat that means that they're going to bring it back to the trailer and say, you know what, we have got no idea. We're going to go back up onto the trailer. Uh, we'll take the DNF and we'll rethink about it next time. Yeah, and look, there's, uh, watch the body language as they come back onto the boat ramp. They won't be talking to each other because they'll be both blaming each other. And of course, Betsy being the man that he is, he'll say, no joke, I'll take the blame. Yeah, we should get in his ear. Anyway, uh, Paddy and Jay <laughs> Hayden now coming out. The A drivers in this Stinger Boats for CPSL. And, well, I tell you, the way that this man has been driving these last two rounds has been phenomenal as soon as he's taken most of the season off after a big crash of what we did the last season. A real knife around there, just oversteered it on the exit. He had a few rotational errors earlier in the day. Qualifying three, he nailed one. Really wide out of there. Oh, jeez, he just snuck that one in. I'll tell you what. Any eels in that part of the grass there, they are now sushi. Yeah, that's dead right. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a really nice bloke, Paddy Hayden. Of course, he gave Jay for Valentine's Day, uh, you know, back in February there, gave her a ride in a jet boat for, uh, for Valentine's Day. What a Day. wonderful man. As he picks up a great time of 40.975. I'll tell very, you what. Otherwise, a very untidy lap. Yeah, very much so, but he's really putting the pressure on real deal Neil Marshall, though, isn't he, mate? Yeah, no doubt about that. The uh, owner of the boat is now under a bit of pressure, but Paddy Hayden got the rotation sorted, very wide out of that hairpin, nearly clipped the uh, top of the island on the exits of the hairpin there, and look, we have seen him drive smoother. He will know that. He'll take that back and, well, try to smooth those lines out for next time, but it is Stewie Latham in the Ryko boat. Grant Death doing the navigational duties here. So the Australian, well, he's just been tickling it through so far today. Seeing a little bit more boat speed this time out. A few guys oversteering it around that sweeping left hand. This boat not sounding quite right to me at all. No, you're right there, KV, and we, uh, as we mentioned before, we thought we had an oil pressure problem with this boat coming into this round, and they were ready to pull the pin. They got that sorted, but there must be some other lagging factor that they haven't put their finger on yet as they go through the centre of the course. This doesn't sound like Stewie's boat was really uh, on song back in Mary Mary a few weeks ago as he comes around the PSP corner. And, uh, 
across the line to get a 45.325. He won't be happy with that at all. Yeah, something just not quite right there, but I dare say that those uh, mechanics and everything will be uh, sorting that out very quickly. Oh, why not? So uh, Stewie Latham will take the boat back up now. It is Tony Reid, Uncle Tony they call him. Andrew Bakey doing the navigational duties from Reid Engineering. Drill Co still at it. Had a shocker last time out. Got a DNF parked up on the side there for a bit. Carried it off. So Uncle Tony will be pretty disappointed with the last run and the effort that he put in there. He'll really need to sort this out. Yeah, he's got to, got to put his foot down here, Katie, you know. Home track, he won't want to leave, uh, certainly won't want to not feature, that's for sure. You know, he's got to get out there and put a great effort in with uh, Mr. Bakey in the other seat, but still a pretty scratchy run from Uncle Tony. Yeah, look, uh, this one looking a lot, lot better. So this one in through here is a nail and he's uh, not far off turning 60, this bloke was around the sport a lot, a lot of years ago. And uh, when he came back, he actually bought the boat and he sold some 18 years earlier. So Tony Reid puts one in the bank at a 45.043. And uh, well, a lot of supporters here of Tony Reid will be pretty happy that he's at no one there. In fact, I dare say that he'll be happy enough just like a tap shoe wearing centipede heading to a rhythm and blues competition. Where do you get these from? I don't know where that one came from at all. Unbelievable. <laughs> so we are now seeing Sean and Bay Rice. They got a DNF last time out. Got a rotation error. So really needs to nail this one. Yes, he'll certainly argue. Maybe, maybe he had a little bit of jet lag, mate, from his uh, recent trip to Australia to compete with your blokes over there. But as he comes back through the centre of the course, see that he really means business as he puts the foot down to go through the wash machine part. It still bounces in there. There's still, that's a big issue, that, uh, that cross wash KB as it goes back to the centre of the course. Yeah, Sean Rice is doing really well at the moment. It's really very interesting. It takes a lot out of drivers and navigators. It might only be a 40-second run, but the concentration levels at this pace are phenomenal. Well, you go, Sean Rice, this is a good one. And across the line, 40.460, his best time of the day, 40.460. So the uh, Coast of Nostra vessel of the Elite Kitchen, Sean and Faye Rice, plenty of supporters here at the Professionals Real Estate Aquatrack Whitra. But I spoke many years ago to Nathan Pretty, a former V8 supercar driver who used to race the uh, sprint boats. And he said, mate, you can do lap after lap after lap at Bathurst, he said, but the concentration level on a 45 second lap in a jet sprint boat takes the energy out of you. He said the lap after lap is almost easier than the 45 seconds that we're seeing here. Cy Gibbon and Donna Johnson, Wood Bank Park Rodgers, weed in the jet unit, they'll go back and uh, have another crack at the start of the line, second time in a row had an issue, quickest group A boat out there at the moment, but it is interesting when you speak to supercar drivers who are saying, you know, these sorts of things they were saying that uh, so uh, the that sharpens their skills and of course when we had Sean and uh, Sean Rice racing in Tamora last weekend, yeah that little bit of air travel but it is a full 8, well sorry, 12 hour day to leave Australia to land back at New Plymouth so we all know what it's like sitting in a car for four hours, eight hours. Well, 12 hours on an aeroplane is no fun either. No, that's right. But uh, So that will take that mental energy out of you just a little bit. He'll sharpen up through the day, no doubt. So I get away again. Good back park cottages. Now, of course, a 38.8 uh, in that last lap, KB. So he'll be looking to, uh, to better that. And uh, that, as I said uh, before, folks, my wild card for the day, he'll be chasing Ollie Silverton and Jess Sitt. Flies across the, uh, or just backed off a wee bit there, KB, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't know if uh, he's happy with that, but we'll soon see, he's still coughing a wee bit, so maybe a bit of weed still tucked in the back of the boat there. Oh, very wide grabs, the tyres on the exit to the right-hander, landed it beautifully, I thought he was going to end up over the island, he's continued on, oh, 
very lucky to get away with that one. Just waiting. 39-3-4-0 there for Cy Gibbon. Wow, big hip and shoulder into the exit, onto the tyres, got the boat completely airborne, landed it, was quick enough to put his foot straight back into it and get up to the top part of the Lucas Oil sweeper. Now, oh. now you know, mate, just now, so he did a 38, now he's done a 39. Ollie hasn't posted a time quicker than that. Do you know, I reckon he wasn't at a wedding the other week, but I reckon he was working on the boat. Well, maybe down there training. Yeah, I reckon that's where he was. He reckons he was at the wedding. He did, he was talking to me yesterday afternoon. He, he got told off by the bridal party because he had snuck away from the photos to check the live stream to see how Donna was going and he had to get a wrap over the knuckles from the bride. So, ah, well. You know, things you do when you're on the... It wasn't his bride. So it wasn't his matter. bride, so that was okay. As Ross we Travers. See, Ross Travers, Super Mario in the radioactive boat headed onto the track now. He's got uh, numbers next to his name. This fellow, he's won numerous championships. Consummate professional all the way down there from Wanganui, the Fordell Garage, as Kavey said before, as he flies past the commentary box. I love the look of this boat, Kavey. This colour scheme is fantastic. And he's only got an eight and a quarter inch jet unit out of the back of this. Most of the group A guys have an eight and a half inch jet unit out of the back. So uh, Ross Travis got the smaller style jet unit for a customer. Boat, but driving nicely at the moment. It's a little bit untidy coming out of the corner early. Ross Travis across the line. Sub 40, 39.815. The man from Fordell, well, he has come to play. I tell you what, Ollie Silverton, you are going to have to put your money where your mouth is today, fella, because these guys are coming for you. And this is going to make racing very, very interesting as we get into qual five and of course when we go into the uh, the big guns of the top nine top six and then of course the inevitable top three to decide the placings kv it's not the first time i've got excited but i'm starting to get excited really early here today mate yeah very early uh, for the excitement levels and the times that we're seeing but it just goes to show second last round of this series the psp series for 2020 final round down in Wanganui on the 4th of April so it is going to be phenomenal now is the time where these guys need to shine Ollie Silverton has not posted the time so I get him at this point will this be the lap that he says you know what Cy si, I'm going to be hot on your heels we are going to make it a very tight race at the top indeed so Ollie Silverton throws his spring tech hole around this real estate Nicely. Yeah, look at the animation from Jess Sitter's world-class navigator. She's very, very animated. She'll be pushing them to the limits of the extreme to get this boat. Oh, oh hesitation. He yeah. nearly went right. It was quick reaction time that got him back onto the course proper. How did he do it? He's beyond my understanding. Ollie Silver and Jess Sitter. Oh, we lost the time. Just waiting for Matt Manell. It was a 39 second. It will be thereabouts. 39 second run according to my brain, but Un don't, don't rely on that. Unofficially 38 48, so. Matt Manell, oh, our timing man. 39.494. I tell you what, the pressure was on Matt Manell, the veins in his head. <laughs> they were pumping. Look at that, KV, look at that uh, difference. Uh, Cy Gibbon still stays at P1. Tim with Coleman and Dylan Matthews out now. Sorry, mate. Oh, no, that's all right. We'll get, we'll get through these guys, and uh, then we've got Neil Marshall, the big deal in the Stinger Boats out next. But, uh, wow. So, Tim Coleman, Dylan Matthews, the B-drives in violent tendencies. Oh, just Jay's gone the wrong way. Gone the wrong way, realised it too late. Now got to work out how to get back to that part of the rotation. Left here, Tim. No, 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 no. You've got to go back from the way in which you came. So Tim Coleman believes that he's back on the rotation proper. He needs to come back around the hairpin and back on himself just to make that clear. Oh, that'll be uh, that'll be frustrating for these guys because, as you can see, folks, the hammer's still down. So they haven't picked up, they've gone the wrong way and they won't realise that until they get up to the trailer or have a look on the uh, results sheet and see those unfortunate letters of DNF 
uh, posted against their name because the time will not count. He did not finish. So just to clarify that, ladies and gentlemen, coming out of the hairpin, he took the wrong channel. To re-correct himself, he needs to come back, go around the hairpin, and then into the correct channel. So you see Paddy and Jay Hayden just down in front of the commentary box. Uh, they're pointing at one another, pointing at the track. Neil Marshall now, Haley running. So, Paddy Hayden, uh, he posted a time of a 49, 40.975. The A driver of this thing about Neil Marshall certainly wants to beat that. And Neil Marshall was uh, rated as New Zealand's top tarmac rally driver a number of years ago. Not raced much this season at all, been very busy as an industrial coding inspector. And well, he's back on track properly now and certainly looking pretty smooth at the moment. Neil Marshall in his final corner at a 40.957. Neil P Marshall goes oh, about 0.018 quicker than the man you're about to interview there, Slim, the A driver of that particular boat. Just a wee bit quicker there, Paddy. Uh, what have you got to say about that? Oh, it's a long day. Really long day, mate. You're pretty, you're pretty confident standing here talking to Jay just before, and then I saw you do the quick look over your shoulder, mate, and have a look at that. But that's okay. I bet you've got a lazy fiver on this. I, I, yeah, yeah, a fiver or more, maybe, maybe a box or two. 